Nor was the most beloved wife of King Hussein of Jordan. She had no royal roots and was born and raised in America. But this did not prevent her from becoming Queen of Jordan. They lived together for 21 years, and they might have had more time together if not for Hussein's passing due to illness. How did a simple American girl manage to become the king's wife, and where is she now? But before we begin, don't forget to click subscribe if you want more stories in the future. Let's get started. Lisa Najib Halabi was born in Washington, D.C., USA. Her father, Najib Halabi, came from Syrian Lebanese heritage, and her mother, Doris Carlquist, was Swedish. Lisa's great grandfather, Elias Halabi, moved to New York around 1891 as one of the earliest Syrian Lebanese immigrants. Lisa's father had a diverse career. He was a Christian scientist, a Navy experimental test pilot, an airline executive, and a government official. He is also known for making the first transcontinental jet flight in American history and his service as chairman of Pan Am from 1969 to 1972. As you can see, Lisa's family did not have royal origins, but they were privileged, wealthy, and respected. They lived in America but remembered their Arab roots. This would subsequently help Lisa gain respect in Jordan. Lisa Najib Halabi received a bachelor's degree in architecture and urban planning from Princeton University. Later on, she joined Alia Airlines and eventually rose to the position of director of facilities planning and design. During that time, she met King Hussein of Jordan. Their first encounter happened in the winter of 1976 when Lisa was traveling with her father. They were attending a special ceremony celebrating the purchase of Royal Jordanian Airlines' first Boeing 747. It was during this event that Lisa got to meet King Hussein and his wife, Queen Elia. A very sad event happened in the royal family of Jordan just a year later. Queen Elia died in a helicopter accident. This was a huge tragedy for King Hussein. He deeply loved his wife and together they raised three children. Two were their biological children and one was adopted. Additionally, the king had been married two times before. His first marriage in his younger years was to his father's third cousin, Princess Dina, who had a daughter with him. His second marriage was to a woman of British descent named Tony Gardner, who became Princess Muna and had four children with him. The eldest son from this marriage is the current King of Jordan, Abdullah II. So before marrying his fourth wife, King Hussein already had eight children with three different women. Following the death of his previous wife in 1977, King Hussein felt a need for new love in his life. Lissa Halaby was the woman who played a significant role in helping him move past the sadness and find happiness once more. Their meeting happened unexpectedly. In 1977, Lisa got accepted to Columbia University's School of Journalism. But before she could start, an exciting job offer came her way. The founder and chairman of Royal Jordan Airlines offered her a position to oversee a department responsible for planning, designing, and maintaining the airline's facilities in Jordan and worldwide. Lisa agreed to this offer, a decision that would significantly transform her life. In April 1977, Lisa's dad introduced her to King Hussein. During their meeting, the king talked to the girl about work matters. They got along well and decided to have lunch together the following day. Just a week later, the king started showing interest in Lisa and asked her to join him in Aqaba for a weekend with his kids and friends. After that, they regularly spent time together at his home enjoying activities like watching movies and riding motorcycles and helicopters. Most importantly, they cherished talking and sharing their feelings. Their love story blossomed quickly, maybe even too fast, considering that King Hussein had recently lost his beloved wife, Queen Elia. By April of the following year, the king met with Lisa's father and openly expressed his desire to marry her. Despite Lisa's deep affection for the king, agreeing to his proposal wasn't simple. The significant age gap of 16 years and the king's nine children posed challenges. 
Also, after the wedding, she had to become a Muslim and completely change her life. In her book, Leap of Faith, Memoirs of an Unexpected Life, published in 2003, she wrote, I will not deny that the idea of being his fourth wife, or anybody's fourth wife, was troubling to me. Yet, despite her concerns, she agreed to the marriage. In June 1978, their wedding ceremony was held at the Zoran Palace in Amman. Before the customary Islamic ceremony, Lisa embraced Islam and received the name Nur al Hussein, which translates to the Light of Hussein. After the traditional ceremony, a big celebration took place, attended by 500 guests, including influential people from around the world. Following the festivities, the couple left in a limousine for their honeymoon. Lisa Najib Halabi was crowned queen, becoming the first queen born in America to rule an Arab country. The people of Jordan had mixed feelings about the king's new wife. Some were unsure if a Western woman could fully adapt to life in Jordan. However, others knew about her Arab heritage and were pleased that the king had found new love after the loss of his previous wife. But young Queen Noor has truly captivated many people. At her wedding, she delighted guests with her exquisite style, impressing everyone with her stunning wedding dress and hairstyle. Jordanians also felt a strong connection to Noor when they learned about her decision to adopt the king's children from his previous marriage. She built good relationships with the late Queen Alia's children and took charge of managing the royal household. Queen Noor and King Hussein welcomed their first son, Hamza, two years after getting married. A year later, their second son, Hashim, was born, followed by two daughters named Princess Aman and Princess Raya. Throughout their marriage, the king and queen were always together, attending important events and engaging in political activities side by side. They seemed incredibly happy together making their marriage the most joyful and enduring bond in the King of Jordan's life. They shared 21 wonderful years, but sadly, the King's life was cut short by a terrible illness in 1999. After King Hussein's passing on February 7, 1999, Queen Noor had hoped her son Hamza would take the throne. However, Abdullah II assumed power, sidelining Hamza by appointing his son as crown prince which reduced Queen Noor's influence. When her son voiced criticisms against the government and was placed under house arrest, Queen Noor's relationship with the ruling family became strained, prompting her to leave Jordan. She now resides in the USA and the UK. Today, Queen Noor is 72 years old, but she actively participates in public life despite her age. She is still a global humanitarian and outspoken advocate for international understanding. Today, she is also the grandmother of 12 grandchildren. After her husband's death, she never remarried. To this day, she continues to cherish the memory of him. She sometimes publishes photographs of King Hussein on her social media, which she usually signs with love messages. In her best-selling book, Leap of Faith, Memoirs of an Unexpected Life, Queen Noor describes the devotion she and King Hussein shared as magic. You don't look for that, love. It finds you, she said. And it found me through him, and I am very blessed for it. Even 24 years after her husband's death, she still loves him. Don't you think this is very touching? And thank you for watching.